understanding the three main operation of FTL, which is mapping, garbage collection, and wear leveling. So to understand the concept from its base, why do we need SSD to take care of anything as such internal operations? Now, any storage device as also, as also applies to the hard disk needs to be accountable for being able to write some data to that and being able to read some data from that, correct? Irrespective of if it's a hard disk, if it's a floppy disk, if it's a magnetic drive or if it's SSD. And this notion of accessing storage drive is being um, carried forward since ages, since we even invented any storage system or storage drive. So even SSDs have the burden of being backward compatible to this notion of being able to write and being able to read from that. But as we just learned, SSDs have its own internal challenges. So in order to comply to this notion of being able to write anything and being able to read anything that you have written before, SSD need to handle some other stuff and operating system or the host need not be bothered with this stuff. What is this stuff like? For example, if we have some logical data, that logical data or the, the data as per what host is able to see that we call as logical data may not be stored exactly at that block address location. Let's say that logical data is represented with block number zero, then physically inside the SSD, it may not be stored on neither the physical block zero nor the physical page zero inside the block zero. And this is because how we just saw in that diagram, we need to do in order to uh, comply to this challenge that SSD provides us, which is out of place update and different granularities of read, write and ARIES operations. We need to do some internal um, movement of data and physically the data might reside into some page, some block within the SSD and some way in order to be able to deliver that, the data residing in that physical location to the host, we definitely need to store this mapping of logical to physical, right? Oh, if we know this mapping, we can just look at that physical location, get that data, give to the host, and whenever we get a new data, again, we update this mapping table that, hey, where did you store this new data? I stored at this new location. We update the mapping table. That's exactly why we need mapping for. So why do we have other two also as operations that we need to do within FDL? Garbage collection is another very important operation that we, are, that we need to do inside the SSD without even knowing the term garbage collection in the last example that we discussed, we already discussed the process of garbage collection where we marked some of the pages, the, if we have an update to an already existing page, we mark that page as invalid or we mark that page as stale. What are, when we have many invalid or stale pages, what you would call these pages as? obviously garbage because there is no use for those invalid or stale pages. And when there is too much of garbage inside your SSD, what happens then? 
well, you have to take the trash out and everybody in the family or everybody in the house gets their turn, right? So that's the same thing. And when SSD has a lot of garbage, we need to do garbage collection, which is getting this garbage out and reclaiming the free space. So one mechanism or one straightforward idea to do garbage collection is, let's say every block has multiple pages, depending on what I can draw in this figure, my block have just three pages. Now, if there are multiple such blocks, depending on how many invalid pages this block, each block has, there could be some block for which all the three pages are invalid, some block for which only one page is invalid, and some blocks for which two of the three pages are invalid. So what if I am asked to do the garbage collection, now I know that we can do arrays only at the granularity of block. What I would do is, first I would look at all these three blocks. Then I would pick a block inside which all the pages are invalid. So, well, I am sure that nothing matters to me inside that block. So I can directly erase the whole block and then reclaim the space, reclaim the, the space occupied by that block as now free pages. So now it's ready for new data to be stored. While next, I would go to the block that has, again, the least amount of work that I have to do inside that block. So if we are going in the decreasing order, we could choose next block to garbage collect as the block that has two pages invalid. So we know that after going through all that effort of rewriting the page, first we have to rewrite just a single page to an another block. Maybe we could choose the same block that we just reclaimed. So I, I could rewrite the this valid page that still matters to me at this location. In, in the block that we just reclaimed, then I know that, okay, now that I have secured the information that matters to me in this block, now this block is ready to be erased. So we could go ahead and erase this block and reclaim its free pages. Finally, we would go to this one last block that has single page as invalid and two other pages as valid. If we had to, then we would have, in order to reclaim the page of this, pages of this block, we would have to rewrite this two pages to the new location. Let's say we rewrite this to this location over here. Then we could go ahead and erase this and we have another block available to us as free pages. This process of Reclaiming the space occupied by invalid or the stale pages is called garbage collection. Now, definitely I'm sure you already started your mind gears to think about what could be different ways in which we could make this process of garbage collection more efficient and how we can optimize that. There is range of research articles and range of inventions that happened on constructing the state-of-the-art garbage collection mechanisms and techniques. And again, if you are interested to read more about that, I would be definitely happy to point you towards what articles can give you more updated information on that. So shoot me an email. Um, so garbage collection. Um, now, finally, where leveling. Why do we need wear leveling? Because we know that in an SSD, each NAND cell has a limited number of program array cycle. And we know that an SSD constitutes of many, 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 many such NAND cells. Now imagine a scenario where just some, a group of your NAND cells 
are being intensively used again and again, again and again, repeatedly, but the rest of the NAND cells are never used. In that case, just because this small group of NAND cells get, get out, are out of their maximum allowed P cycles, we would have to say that the whole SSD can no longer be used because we never know when data will be stored inside that particular group of P cells and if the data is uh, that particular group of transistors. And if the data is stored in the cells, then we know that we no longer, that information is no longer reliable because we might not be reading what we already, what we actually wrote, or we think we wrote the information, but it may not be returned exactly onto the cell. Thus, this then points us to the problem of what if rather than single group of cells being extremely worn out compared to other, how, what if we can level this wear out? So what if we distribute the wear out across all the cells inside the SSD in a way ensuring that we make the most out of every possible cell that we have inside SSD before claiming that SSD to be no longer used or before throwing off that SSD. So that's exactly the concept behind wear level. Now, from the discussions that we did on garbage collection, definitely, if you are thinking that garbage collection in a way would help us to wear out this or to wear level the um, wear level the SSD, then that's right. It because the way we were writing the data in this example that we took of garbage collection, the way I explained how we are storing this reclaimed, the valid pages inside the blocks that we want to erase. It's more of a log structured. Now we would discuss how new writes would be stored in a log structured way soon next. But when we have this type of management, then we know that every time we want to, we reclaim some, something that we want to erase, once we reclaim the pages from that, we are using new sets of blocks. And with this ensuring that we are using new sets of blocks, in a way we are marching for leveling the wear out. Yes, so garbage collection helps in a way to do the bare leveling, but it we cannot guarantee that every cell will be, all the cells will have equal wear out. It just depends on how many cells have all the blocks invalid versus how many cells have partial, if partial, what proportion of the blocks invalid, what proportion of pages invalid, and so on and so forth. So in addition to garbage collection, we also have a specific wear leveling algorithm that is responsible to do, to ensure that if there are sets of pages inside a blog that are not being updated in controversy to uh, some another pages inside some another blog that are being reprogram and erased very frequently, then it would just switch the physical address for these pages. So now the ones that were not used starts getting used and ones that were used, the wear out on those, the pages of those blocks is slowly reduced. So then next, now going to this idea of log structured data storage. Our current SSDs are log structured data storage. And why do we have them as log structured data storage? Well, let's start from the beginning. So as we know that we need some kind of mapping that stores the relation of logical to physical 
data locations. Logical data is on the host side, the physical data locations are on the SSD side. Now, from the IOSTAT diagram, if you remember, we had application that in, can interact with file system, file system can interact with, those are bidirectional arrows that can interact with block layer and block layer can interact with device driver and device driver can interact with the IO controller, the like the one that we have inside the SSD. And finally, IO controller can interact with the actual SSD or any storage device. So in this uh, simplistic IO stack diagram, everything above this definitely lies on the host, even device driver is a piece of software that goes inside the operating system. But everything below this lies inside the SSD as we saw in, in the SSD diagram. So the last layer through which device driver is again device specific. So every device will have its own driver. But the last layer of granularity of data from host side that any device is interacting with is the block layer. And block layer is responsible to sort the data out into this nice piece of blocks. Now, these are logical blocks. And if we are able to store the mapping of this logical blocks to the physical location of data on the SSD, then our job is solved. One simplistic way to do this or to store this mapping is log-based mapping. Where we would just store logical pages a mapping of logical pages to physical pages. This is easy, right? So if we have any logical page, let's say logical page number five, we know logical, we can, we can number all the pages inside the block. So let's say in an SSD, if we have our three block SSD, block number zero, one, and two. Each of the block has three pages starting from zero, one, two. We can um, number them in an incremental order. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our, this SSD would have eight pages lying across three blocks. And then we can say, have nine pages. We started from zero lying across three blocks. And we can see, we can have, if we have this direct mapping, if it's logical number page five, if we know logical number page five is stored in our physical page number seven, logical and so on and so forth. Logical number page six is stored in our physical location zero. And for each page, if we know such a mapping, then it will be very easy to read the data. As soon as you know that you want to read page number six, you know, okay, physically that page number six means page number zero. We can do read at the granularity of pages. So read page number zero and we are done. In the same way, when a new write comes, we could just have, let's say that a new write to the page number, to logical page number seven came. We can pick any of the empty pages in the SSD. Let's say our page number eight is an empty page and we can say that, hey, I stored page number seven into page number eight. So even the first time writes are easy, but what happens to the updates? Whenever we have an update, let's say we updated page number seven with page, page the, we updated the content stored in page number seven. Initially we were storing data A, now we have a new 
content A prime to be stored in page number seven. So we know that page number seven maps to physical page ID eight, that is this page, but we cannot do in place updates. So I cannot just erase this content A stored in it and replace that with A prime. We would have to erase whole block, but we know that, okay, in this example, let's say that even before this, we had this one more data where we had logical page number four that was stored in physical page number six. So now we know that physical page number six, physical page number seven are also storing something that matters to us, which is this and this. So we cannot directly go ahead and areas whole block, then we would lose these two information. So as again explained earlier, we would have to replace, find a new location for these two pages before we could go ahead and erase this block. And then once we erase the block, we would be able to write the new version of A into page number eight. And because our mapping table is not storing, it is, it is storing directly the new pages, we have an option. Either we can update our mapping table with the new location of these pages, or we could copy these pages back to its location and in that way, we avoid an update to the mapping table. It's a design choice. But in either way, we are causing much more internal latencies and internal overhead in order to, if we have this direct mapping table. And another big advantage of direct mapping table is can you think what it what it could be? One very, very big disadvantage of direct mapping. Well, many more, many of you have already got it. And you could be correct. Another very big disadvantage of direct mapping table is the large size of the mapping table itself. Because we have one entry for every physical page. That means, for example, if we have one terabytes of one terabyte of SSD, then we would have to store four bytes for if we assume that the page size is four kilobytes for every four kilobyte page, because we have one entry for every page. So in total for one terabyte SSD, we would need around one gigabyte of memory. Just to store mapping table, we are not storing any application related information or any workload related data in this. We are just storing our internal management data. That's a mapping table and whole one GB is just wasted in that. So minimum SSD you can have is one GB. Well, that sounds strange, right? Um, so if you have one terabyte SSD, then one gigabyte is just wasted on that. Not quite friendly or not quite space efficient. So these are the big disadvantages of direct mapping table where the space wastage of large size of mapping table and the cost that incurs with every update or ARIES operation is very high. So next, what could be proposed as improvement of this direct mapping table? Are there any other ways in which we could improvise the way we are mapping things, maybe reduce the size of the mapping table, or maybe improve the overhead that we are causing internally? Think, think, think.
I know some of you have already come up with not just one, but multiple ways. So let's go ahead and discuss some, some ways to improve the situation over here. Now, just to recall, in all this, we are uh, going with the notion of SSD is the lock structured storage. And only if it's a lock structured storage, then we are allowed to put this data somewhere else and do not worry about copying it back exactly this to the same location. If it's not a log structured storage, that means every data exact, it can exist only in a single specific location, we would have to copy things back. So that also causes an, some more overhead. For example, here in this case, if we had to copy back these two pages, um, just in order to comply to that, we are not allowed to change the mapping table because every logical page has a fixed physical page. So let's say if we are um, tied to a restriction that the logical page can, logical page zero can already, can only be stored in physical page C. Logical page one can only be stored in physical page one. That, that even increases our overhead and our internal mess, right? The things to do. So that's why this idea of going with direct um, storage is not that quite good. And that's why we stick to SSD being lock structured storage. Now in lock structured data storage, as the name says, we are maintaining a log. And that's why from the beginning, when we started discussing about SSD, every time when we have to either write something that's important inside the page to an another location, we are using this term that, okay, we'll go out there, find a free block, a free page in the free block, and we can store data there. That block could belong to this log that we are writing incrementally one after the other. So imagine that you have a log that has a bunch of blocks that has all the free pages. And whenever you have new writes or internal writes that need some space, you, we can just go ahead and allo allocate the free pages inside this block um, for, for those new data. So coming back to this more advanced mechanism of mapping, one another mechanism that, that we could use to reduce the size of this mapping table is with comes with a very simplistic idea. 